hello to our lovely subscribers. We're back with Dr. Marion Kelsey, Hebrew Bible scholar at the University of Nottingham. And we're here to talk about the Lord of the Rings and pedagogy. Welcome back, Marion. Thank you. So, would you use the Lord of the Rings in a classroom or in another teaching environment? I, uh, I have used Lord of the Rings in the classroom before. And, of course, I teach Hebrew Bible that involves a fair bit of teaching students what biblical prophecy is because they, they don't get it always. And Wait, what is biblical prophecy? <laughs> well, let me tell you. Um, and so I have one little lecture segment on the different roles of biblical prophets as Lord of the Rings characters. And there were four different roles, various different aspects of biblical prophecy and one, for example, was the one that everyone thinks of, the, the foretelling the future. And so that is a kind of Galadriel style with her mirror, mm. seeing what the future might be. And that's a crucial aspect, what it might be, not what it must be. But a very important prophetic role is the role of standing in the breach. And so for this, you have to think of the prophet as the go-between, between God and the people. And the people in the Hebrew Bible are constantly misbehaving, constantly angering God. And God, as is well within his rights, within the biblical understanding, is constantly wanting to wipe out these disobedient people who have disobeyed him for the last time. And the prophetic books portray this in several places as God, as an attacking enemy, besieging a city in which all the people are. And their disobedience is the breach in the city walls that will allow God through to destroy them all. And the prophet's role is to stand in the breach and hold back God. The prophet's role is to defend the people from God by arguing with him, by fighting with God. And for me, that immediately makes me think of Aragorn. Aragorn in Helm's Deep, where the, the bomb blows this huge hole in the wall of Helm's Deep. And Aragorn, together with some of his soldiers, runs down into the gap and holds back the assaulting army of Mordor in this gap in the wall. And, and so I, I explained all of this, all of these prophetic roles um, with different characters from Lord of the Rings, including a, a very spirited rendition of Aragorn standing in the breach, <laughs> holding back, holding back the armies of Mordor. And then only at the end of the lecture, I thought to ask the students, so how many of you seen Lord of the Rings? Oh. <laughs> and less than half of them put up their hands. <laughs> oh, like, no. No. And yes, it was one time where I've really been made to feel my age. And so from now on, Lord of the Rings is going to be homework in the lesson before mm. I teach students about the different roles of prophecy. So would you encourage them to watch all three films? Yeah, of course. Or would you... St okay. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Who wouldn't want to watch all three yeah. films? <laughs> the students, they've got a spare 12 hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's quite an assignment. <laughs> it is quite an assignment. I find that really interesting in some ways because it, it's visualising the role of the prophet but not showing, like, someone in a dramatization of being a prophet and then doing it. It's like the symbolism of that. Mm -hmm. So I find that such an interesting way of kind of using media to portray a concept mm -hmm. rather than just here's how that concept looks when someone's embodying it. It's, mm -hmm. it's dealing with the symbolism of it. I was going to say, it's not like prophet was always this salaried role in biblical times there, there were some formal roles that prophets took but you get quite a few prophets who were just described as men of god who go around doing godly things and then there's debate about where the exact boundaries lie of who is a prophet and who is not and yeah and, and, and so I, th I think it's entirely feasible to see people who are not explicitly identified as prophets as performing prophetic roles and actually in in one of the recent pieces I've published on prophetic protest, I put Lot's wife in there. Um, she's never called a prophet in the Bible or in the tradition, not Lot's wife. I put Job's wife in there, mm. who's never called a prophet in uh, the Bible or biblical tradition born from the Bible, as far as I can find out. But she does the whole describing the situation as it really is and laying out the options as they really are in a way that prophets are expected to do. She's not portrayed particularly well 
But that is fundamentally what she's doing in the book of Job. And so I, I put her in there as an example of a prophetic voice. It's, it's interesting as well with showing the visuality, the symbolism of what's going on. I think that in some ways helps alienate the concept. Mm -hmm. So because you're not being shown a direct portrayal, but this is how I think of the role of the prophet in these terms, and then you show those as motifs. I think there's something about that that deliberately distances mm -hmm. the learner from conceptions they yeah. might have. Yeah, don't think you understand this walking into the room. Yeah. Because you probably don't. <laughs> Rather than, like, I, I don't know, I cannot think of a film depiction of a prophecy right now off the top of my head. There must be tons of them, but or, or of a prophet. Maybe you get those figures in Life of Brian, right? A film depiction of a prophecy? No, uh, of a prophet. Like a, I was going to say, we've dealt with prophecy Egypt? like multiple times in this season. Yeah. I mean, you get that a bit in Harry Potter with Professor Trelawney. There we go, yeah. I think that's the sort that you're looking yeah. for, right? As opposed to Noah. Yeah. In Noah, where he's not very successful. <laughs> uh, I mean, people think he's a kook mm. and don't understand what he's doing or what he's saying. So that as an idea of distancing from a conventional understanding of it, I think works quite well with these kind of examples. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah. Is it something you would... So... If you're not actually going to set them to watch the Lord of the Rings, will you still <laughs> include like uh, include that as an idea? And I then think just... so. And I can just explain more about the storyline of Lord of the Rings. Yeah. But I think even if they haven't seen the films, it's something that they will have seen the memes. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. And like knowing Shakespeare mainly through the quotes, I think Lord of the Rings they will know through the memes. Thanks again to our guest, Marianne, for her extra time today. As always, you can follow us at GodMovPod on Twitter and Instagram. You can also contact us or donate on our website, GodsAndMovieMakers.com. Thanks for listening and thanks for subscribing. Until next time. I'm Joe Scales. And I'm Katie Turner.